piece that um, it helps, uh, I don't know, I've been reading up on a whole bunch of stuff and it's just a lot of stuff. So well, you're, well, right it. now you're on Facebook Live, young lady. Oh, praise God. Yeah, yeah, we're on Facebook Live. This watchman, Yahoo to Israel, also known as uh, Pastor Derek Mann. We're on Facebook Live. So, sorry for the tardy. I got caught up in traffic, but we finna get it in. Hopefully Ezra is with us. Alvin, check on Broski. Make sure he's good, family. Um, we finna get it in and get in his word. Uh, Y'all tell a friend. Tell him we on again. We're on again. So let me get ready to go on and uh let's 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 get there. Uh let's do this. What do I do? Oh, I gotta chime in to the line. Huh? Let me chime into the line right quick, y'all. Gonna get it started. So I can go live. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. You can mute if you want to talk at the end. You can get back on the line. So you can just put your phone down, mute it, and go live, or, or just go do do it however you do it. But yeah, we Facebook Live right now. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman Yahoo to Israel, also known as Pastor Derek Mann on the evening scripture study on this Thursday. Uh, we're on Facebook Live as well. Let's let's get it in. What was laid on my heart today is talk about uh talk about communion. Let's talk about communion today. So um let me see, how do I want to attack this? Let's go to um let's go to uh I don't want to do let's go to Exodus, y'all. Let's go to Exodus. It'd be questions about communion. I think my boy Q Heem the Redeem asked me about communion. And uh I don't like to give half baked answers, so we're going to dive in. I want to talk about something else. I always do this to myself, right? I want to talk about something else because it, it really be relevant that we get on the same page spiritually because that's really what this is all about. But one of, the, one of the way, how do you eat an elephant, right? You eat it one bite at a time. And it's a big, big, big piece of meat to eat, too. But we're going to eat the thing, right? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, Exodus, quick prayer. Spirit of living Yahweh, we love you and thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Ask you to just show up and show out. Do what only can do. Send a relevant word to this to your people. We're completely dependent on you. And we thank you. In the match the name of Yeshua, we humbly pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. Look what it says, Exodus 12 and 1. It says, And Yah spake unto Moses and, and, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, uh, they shall take to them every man um, a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. And every man according uh, to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out of the sheep and from the goats. And you shall keep it on to the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the side, on the two side posts, 
and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they uh, shall eat the flesh in, in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and, and with bitter herbs shall uh, they, and shall they, um, and shall they eat it. I'll read a little bit more. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, right? Your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. And it is uh, Yahshua's Passover or Yah's Passover, right? That's the Passover. And y'all heard uh, the meal. Now, now let's go to, let's go to Corinthians 11 chapter, right? Let's dive into Saul talking to the Ecclesia, right? That's in uh, uh, Corinth, right? Look what he say. All right, let's see here. Look what he say. First Corinthians 11 chapter, beginning at the 17th verse, right? Look what he say. It say, now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not. Okay, so now he fussing. Saul was fussing with the people, right? The believers, right? He say, now in this... That I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. He has a problem with the gathering. They got a gathering going on that he ain't with, right? First of all, look how he talking. He talking like he from the town, huh? For first of all, when you come together in the assembly, I hear that there be divisions among you. And I partly believe it. For there must be also hearsays among you, that they that are uh, approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, in one place, this is not to eat the Master's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before his own supper, and one is hungry and the other is drunken. Huh. If you look at this thing, right, he's not happy with them because they're coming together and everyone got individual meals. So as you can even see uh, in the Passover meal in the beginning, when they were in Egypt, it was a full meal with bitter herbs. They had lamb roasted with fire. They had unleavened bread. It was a meal. But 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 the meal had representation. It, it, it meant something. It represented something. So we got to get out of this symbolism and find out what's happening. Because these people is coming in the name of having uh, the Messiah's Supper. The Master's Supper. But, but Paul is telling them, this ain't the Lord's Supper. What y'all doing is not the Lord's Supper. Right? Because folks got their own little separate meals. Now, you got to you really get the significance of that. What does it mean people got their own significant meals? And he had a problem with it. Because that type of stuff is still happening today. People are coming together, but they got their own little meals. They got their own little teachings. They got their own little cliques that they're forming. It's too many... Um, when you have assemblies, right, you end up with, um, like, these um, pew preachers, these parking lot preachers that don't know truth, don't know the word, and they, they get besides themselves, and they get to misleading people and all that type of stuff. But that's a whole nother lesson, right? But it, it's relevant in the spiritual aspect of what we're talking about, of people is coming to the assembly supposedly to eat uh, the Messiah's Supper, 
but instead they got their own little meals individually, like division. That's why denomination is not cool because, you know, little divisions. But anyway, when you come together in one place, this is not to eat uh, 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 the Messiah's Supper. For in uh, eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another drunk. Then you got to even look at, at the suppers. They had real wine. And you can't say that the scripture wine, uh, uh, could, you couldn't get drunk off of it because they, the word said they got drunk. Noah got drunk. Uh, the word says, be not drunk with wine when it's excess will be filled with the spirit. But here it is. Okay, so they have their meals. Some folks don't have nothing to eat, right? And some folks is over drinking. What? Look what he's saying. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Don't you have a house to eat in? And drink, drink your wine at home, he's saying. Or despise ye the ecclesia of Yah. And shame them that have not. What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? Peep this. I praise you not. No, you get no compliment from me. This is out of line. This is out of order, right? Now watch this. For I have received of the master that which also I delivered unto you. That how uh, uh, Yeshua the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do a remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped it, saying, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Right? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Messiah's death till he come. Well, remember what we just read in Exodus, the 12th chapter, right? How that the deaf angel was coming. Just like it is now. The times we live in, the deaf angel was here. The deaf angel was back then too, and it was coming. But what he told them to get a lamb without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing, who do you think that lamb represented? It represented the Messiah. That's why it had no spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. It was perfect. A perfect lamb. And they killed it, and they took the blood, and they put it on the post of their house. Then they went in to eat the Passover meal. Bitter herbs, because when, when, when you eat, when you eat this word, it's bitter to your stomach. It's bitter to your flesh. When you eat the real word, it don't taste good. Not to the flesh anyway. It's good to the soul, but to the flesh, the flesh don't win in this race, right? So, 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 so and they're taking a, a, a lamb roasted with fire because that lamb is going to be baptized with fire that we might be able to be saved. So you took the blood and you put it on the post so that the death angel can pass over you. And then they were told to eat it with their clothes on, with their staff in their hand, because you go in places. It, it, it represented something. It represented, it, it represented what, 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 what Paul was telling them. That was the representation. He taught them exactly what the Messiah taught him. Watch this. Let's go to it. Let's go to uh, Matthew's uh, real quick. Let's go to Matthew's 26. Matthew's 26 and 26. Look what it say. It says, And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it. And remember, this is the Passover before he was betrayed. This is the Passover meal that we're talking about. The same uh, uh, Passover meal that we read in Exodus 12. This is, the, this is them carrying it out, right? And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, 
which is shed for many for the remission of sins. That's, this is what it's talking about. And you got to understand they were having a full meal. It wasn't no little cracker and it wasn't no little shot of grapefruit juice. And it was all symbolic. They were having a full meal with bitter herbs and everything. The whole meal was laid out. They were fellowshipping. They were laughing, reminiscing, going over the word. Because that's what the Passover was about. When they did it in Exodus, they was going to get the heck up out of there. And they were fellowshipping the victory. That death is going to pass over us and we leaving tomorrow. We getting the heck up out of here. That's like being called out of sin, called out of the world. Leaving Egypt. Egypt represents the world. Sin, bondage to sin. The game, right? We getting out the game. We tired of it. The games in relationships, the games in fake marriages, the games in the street, the street hustle, fake friends, folks smiling in your face, stabbing you in the back. The, the dog eat dog world. We leave in that. So the, the 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 lamb has been slain. We didn't took the we didn't took we didn't took the blood and put it on the house, the post of the house, and the post that house represents our house, our body, us. We're taking the blood of the lamb and putting it on us. And then the death angel was coming through to kill, but it's not gonna kill us. Because when he see the blood, he gonna pass on by. This is what it's talking about, communion. Talking about coming together, right? So they're having a full bill. He took, he took the bread and said, this is my body. He took, the, he took the cup of wine, real wine. They're drinking, having a good time, being merry. And he drank it and said, this is the, the blood of my New Testament. It's all symbolic, right? And he said, and my blood is going to be uh, shed for many. Whoever believed for Yah so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him, in him, what? The word. Whoever believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. How, you ain't gonna have uh, eternal life with sin. That's why it said, which is shared for many for the remission of sins. He's taking sin out of the way. He's forgiving you for your past sins, and he's gonna give you his Ruach HaKadosh so you can move forward without sin. And if you just so happen to sin, confess and forsake. Because he that covers sin won't prosper. But he that confess and forsake shall have mercy. Moving forward, right? Let's look at this real quick. Luke 22. Luke 22, starting at the 15th verse. Look what he said. Another variation of the Passover meal. Look what he said, though. Y'all write this down, I hope, so y'all can study it later. And he said unto them, talking about Yeshua, right? Uh, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover uh, with you before I suffer. He knew what he had to go through, right? For I say unto you, I will not, um, um, I will not any more eat thereof until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of Yah. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Yah shall come. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given to you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after uh, supper, saying, uh, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now look at this. I want to see the 20th verse. It says, likewise also the cup after supper. So they literally had dinner. They were having dinner. They were fellowshipping. They were coming together on one accord. They were having dinner. After dinner. It wasn't like they, they, they betrayed in this religious stuff. Like he took the bread like he was doing this, 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 uh, this sacrilege, this, this ritual. That's how they make it seem, don't it? But this says, likewise, also he took the cup after supper. So in other words, they were fellowshipping, going against, going through the word or whatever, and he was having dinner with them. And when he grabbed his bread, he broke it down to them, say, see this, this body, when y'all come together in fellowship, look at this, see this bread, this is going to happen to my body, is what he's saying. It's going to be broken, and it's going to be broken so that you can be saved. After dinner. It wasn't like he went, he was doing this ritual that they do, like in the Catholic church, right? They got this host. You know, they pop that joker and then they take a blue. He got a, a, a handkerchief and a gold cup and all, all that old stuff. 
or even how they doing it in the, in, 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 in the modern churches now. They got this little ritual thing going on. They having dinner, y'all, and they drinking wine. They having dinner. While dinner is going on, he took the bread. He, he took the bread and explained to them, this is about to happen to me. And he used the bread for a reason. It symbolized something. And then after dinner, they kept eating, in other words. After dinner was over, 20 at first. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shared for you, right? So now, let's go. Let's get, and all you're getting, get an understanding, right? So let, let's go to John. Let's go to St. John. Let's bust him open some more, right? I'm not going to read it all. If y'all get a chance when you, you know, at the house or whatever, you're chilling, grab six, John 6, read the whole thing because it's so good and it just opened it up. It'll open it up for you, right? We're talking about communion, right? John 6, starting the 48th uh, a verse, right? Look what it say. Yeshua talking, right? I am the bread of life. Okay, he, he, he coming with it. You know how the, the, the word is full of symbols and all that? Well, he bringing, it, he, he bringing it to fruition right now. He's making it plain, right? He said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. See, people talk about those wafers that fell out of the sky that Yah sent for them to eat, right? They were like little honey wafers, right? But it was manna in the wilderness. They thought they had the bread from heaven. He's making it plain. No, this is the real bread from heaven. They had a shadow and a type. That wafer that was in the wilderness really was speaking of me when I come, right? I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. You see how he's breaking that down? He's letting it be known, I'm about to give my flesh, my body, my life. I'm about to die for your sins. I'm the true bread that came down from heaven. And I'm about to give my body that you might live. Your body should be the one dying because all have sinned and come short. But I love you enough. Who for the joy that was set before me, I'm enduring the suffering that you might live. Because the wages of sin is death. But I'm going to die because you should be dying. But I'm going to die for you. i got to be a perfect sacrifice to set all y'all free. Because remember the lamb in Exodus 12 had to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. It had to be perfect. Well, Yeshua was perfect. He obeyed Yah completely. He was not like the first Adam that went against Yah. He obeyed Yah, and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. So he qualified to be the that lamb. Without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And he's breaking it down for us, right? Look what he say. He said, uh, 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 51 again. 6 and 51. John, for y'all that's just chiming on. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove amongst themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat. They think he sound like a cannibal now, right? They tripping, right? Then Yeshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Except, except you, you believe and accept the fact that he died on that tree, then you got to die for your own sins. You got to deal with it on your own. Which, you ain't got to believe. But, 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 for the believer, for Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you don't believe in that, then you got to be responsible for all the wickedness you done done. You got to pay for your own sins. You, you, you have to deal with the creator because we ain't getting away with nothing. Whatever we do in this body, we're going to give account of it on judgment day, whether good or evil. We don't, we, 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 we don't have to, we don't have to, we don't have to, we have to get a count, right? So, so, so he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. 
Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the Father liveth has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat uh, uh, a manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Did y'all hear that? This is, this is some heck of a bread, y'all. This is the real bread right here. And if you eat of this bread, how many of y'all know that in John 1 and 14, y'all can write it down, St. John 1 and 14, right? He says that... um. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us as we beheld his, 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 his power as of the only begotten of the father, full of, full of unmerited favor and truth. How many know that's Yeshua? How many know the word was made flesh? The, the, the flesh that he's talking about represents his body flesh, but it also represents the word was made flesh. When you eat the word. When the spirit of Yah is able to talk to you and you listen and obey, you're eating the word. And that's what he's talking about. He's talking about eating the word. He's going to give the body for the life of the world. We deserve to die. His flesh, his body going to die for us in our place. But we're going to have to eat the word so we can change. We're going to have to eat the word. We're going to live by the, we're going to have to live by the truth. We're going to have to obey the creator. We can't live the way we've been living. We can't keep doing what we've been doing. We got to change and eat the word in order that we might live. Right? So, uh, 59, this, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum, right? Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Yeshua knew in himself that his disciples murmured at this, and he said unto him, does this offend you? What if, uh, ye, what, what, what if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. I've been saying that to y'all over and over again. The flesh profits nothing in this race. You're going to have to learn self-discipline to really have a true relationship with the Father. The flesh profits nothing. The, fre the flesh don't win. My evil nature don't win. My, to satisfy my lust, my anger, my fickleness, my, my, my iffiness don't, don't work here. Me being a thief or shysty or slickster about my paper, hate no folks. None of that. The flesh do not profit in this. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The word of Yah will cause your spirit to come alive. You will be a new creature, a new creation. If any man be in Yeshua, he's a new creation, a new creature. Old things have passed away. We used to live by how we feel. End up in the bed with six people. Try, trying to please yourself. Ended up disrespecting your body to get some paper. Disrespecting your body, your freedom, risking your freedom, taking penitentiary chances. Being fickle and sometimes, roaming at night. The thief, the freaks come out at night. Remember that song? Folks doing stuff in darkness, living any old kind of way, foul. The flesh profits not the spirit. You apologize in your soul, in your spirit. I'm sorry for living the way I was living. I want to be like this no more. Change me. Hey, look, look what it say. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Quickeneth means to make alive. The flesh prophets nothing. The words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. It was the word. The true bread from heaven is eating the word. Huh. Let's look at it. So let's go back, right? Let's go back to Corinthians, right? 11. Now look at, look at what he's saying to him. And this is what folks come together having communion on first Sundays or whatever. Yeah, first Sundays or whatever. With this little cracker, this little cracker and this little grape juice, and, and they really they love that, right? But watch this. Now, 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 now let's understand. It's a meal. 
He broke the bread during the meal. After the meal, they were drinking wine. And he was just explaining to them what he was about to do when he was using the meal as the example. Because the meal was the foreshadow. And it first happened in Egypt, which which still was a foreshadow of Yeshua coming, the true bread coming, and it tied with when he rained down manna from heaven. That was another shadow that the Yah man was coming, our Savior, our Redeemer was coming. That's what it was symbolizing. It was all symbolic language to get us to right here, right? So watch Paul talking to uh, the Corinthian assembly, right? He said, now in that, no, I'll start at the 19th, right? 20. I'm going to start at 20. Look what it's saying. When you come together, therefore, in one place, this is not to eat the, uh, the, 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 the Messiah's Supper. Because they thought it was. Just like you got a bunch of people assembling in churches now thinking that they're doing the Lord's Supper. What they call the Lord's Supper, right? But look what it say. For in eating, everyone you take before another his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. So he's let them know that like this little ritual that they got like in church now don't even symbolize how they was doing it back in the scripture days. They had the real meal because they knew the, the, the Passover meal was a real meal, a full dinner. They had supper. So we, they, we all off with the little cracker and the little, little flask of little grape juice from the gate, right? They still was wrong too though. So they got their whole dinners out, right? And they brought their wine, real wine to get you drunk wine, right? He said, for in eating, everyone taketh before uh, for other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunk. And what? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise ye the ecclesia of Yah? And shame them that have not. What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. What you're doing ain't right. For I have received of the Messiah that which... Also, I delivered on to you that uh, Yeshua, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had gave, given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So what he's letting you know is when you fellowship, when you come together. Did y'all know the word communion means fellowship? Look it up. It means fellowship. So when we've come together and we fellowship, and that is communion. And he was letting them know when y'all come together in fellowship, we're coming together in fellowship and over a physical meal right now. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the spirit and what this bread represents and what this wine represents, right? After the manner, after the same manner, also he took the cup. Right here it didn't explain that he did it after dinner. But now that we went and read it, we understand he didn't do it at the same time. It was after dinner, right? After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying... This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show uh, the, 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 the Messiah's death till he come. Now look at the 26. It says, for as often as you eat this bread. What bread? It was in flesh that died. Remember the word was made flesh? Could he be talking about every time you eat the word? Because he said, I'm the true bread that came down from heaven. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Remember John 1 and 14? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It was the word. What's important is us having a relationship with what the creators say. We're having a relationship with the word. And we come together in fellowship to get the word. The true word that came down from heaven, not the manna that our forefathers ate, but the true living word, the word that came out of the mouth of Yah, the word that tells us how to live and how not to live, how to forgive, how to do what's right, how to change, how to become new people, new, new creatures, new creations. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember he said the cup is the, the blood of the New Testament? Meaning there's a new contract being written. The old contract is over with. That contract was, was signed with the blood of animals. This new contract is going to be signed with the blood of the Messiah. Drink it. Get out of the old covenant because now we're going into relationship. Let go of even the Passover lamb. 
Because you now experiencing the true lamb. Let go of the manna that came down from heaven, the kind of manna that your forefathers your forefather did eat and they did. No, eat this real so you won't die. If you eat the real word, you're going to have eternal life. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's the flesh. That whosoever believeth in him, that's the word, should not perish but have everlasting life. If you eat of this word, you're going to live forever. You ain't got to worry about no funeral. You ain't got to be scared to die. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and you're going to live forever. Oh, he's breaking it down. As often as you eat this, this is what the Messiah told Paul. Paul brought it to them, but they start having dinners at, at, at the ministry and getting drunk. Having individual meals. And it, and it, and it wasn't cool and it didn't go over well. So he's he's breaking it down. This is what I, this is what he taught me, and this is what I'm teaching you. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you you do show the the, the Messiah's death till he comes. Twenty seven verse, right? Where, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of uh, of Yeshua unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Messiah. People think that eating a cracker and drinking some little grape juice unworthily will cause you to be guilty of, of, of going against Yah? Are you kidding me? You can't see the symbolism? When are we going to wake up spiritually and cut out all these rituals and all this carnal stuff? The flesh profits nothing. That's fleshly stuff. Even when you fast. That's fleshly to go buy a bottle of oil and put oil on your head and, and wash your face before you push away your plate. Push away your plate. You sure didn't have no doggone oil and a washcloth in the wilderness when he was tempted to the devil when he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. That's all symbolism. What, what, when it said wash your face and anoint your head, meaning don't be looking all ashy. Don't be looking all hungry. Don't be looking for people to pat you on the back and say, oh, you fasted? Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm doing it all because I'm so spiritual. I'm so strong and yeah, I'm way stronger than you. So I don't eat because... I don't want to hear all that, man. Go get you a burger then. Well, you should be fasting in secret, remember? Wash your face, anoint your head. Right here, same thing, symbolism. They're having a the Passover meal. He said, no, I'm the Passover. You ain't got to do rituals and stuff no more. That stuff was nailed to the tree. The, the real fellowship, the real communion is when we come together. Uh, Romans, the second chapter. Hebrews, the second chapter. Giving the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard. At least at any time we should let them slip. Having an ear to hear what the Ruah is saying to the Ecclesia. The word is coming and talking to us and we should be paying attention and we should be growing by it. We should be changing by it, Right? Look what it say. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Messiah's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread and drink this cup of, of, of Yeshua unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of, 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 of the Messiah, right? But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. In other words, when the word comes, you need to be honest. Don't act like you all good with Yah and you you a fornicator. You 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 got you got a crack pipe in your purse, right? You 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 heck a crooked, but you want to pretend you're a hypocrite. You want to act like you and the creator is is all hockey dory when the truth of the matter is you all tied up in sin. You all wrong. You need to be on your face being honest. When the word come and you guilty, you should say ouch and be willing to change as opposed to putting up a facade and playing. That's what it's talking about. I ain't talking about no doggone cracker. You think people going to eat a little piece of cracker and, and, and drink a little uh, a, 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 a cup of a grape juice and, and they're guilty of killing uh, the Messiah? No, the Messiah was more interested in us respecting his word over his body. And that's why he told the Pharisees when they was coming against him. You can sin against the Son of Man. You can sin against my flesh. But if you sin against the Word, if you sin against the Ruach HaKadosh, if you sin against the Spirit of Yah, the living Word of Yah, you can't be forgiven in this world, neither the world to come. Because the only way you can be saved is by believing the Word. They was going against the Spirit of Yah. He's sitting up here trying to heal and do all what he's doing. He cast out a devil. They say you cast out devils from a devil. 
He said, well, the kingdom that fight against itself can't stand. I ain't casting out no devil in the name of no devil. The kingdom of Yah is upon you. And if you keep going against the only thing that can save you, which is the word, then you stuck. You tore up. You can't be forgiven in this world, neither the world to come. So here it is. He's letting it be known that if you drink unworthily, the word is coming, right? You too busy doing other things. Other things are more important to you, right? You funking with people in the assembly. You got an attitude. You looking at some female behind. You 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 checking out butts and and cleavage. And you you know what I mean? You 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 sit up there with an alt. You you know he said if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father give you yours. You sit up in the assembly in the in the fellowship word going forth, and you and, and, and you and you're receiving the word unworthily. Not even respecting the word. You're not giving the most earnest heed to it. In other words, the word can come find you in your sin, tell you you wrong, and you just shrug it off like you don't care. That is the problem. If he was willing to die a torturous death that we might live and be able to receive the word, and you just going to shrug it off like it ain't nothing, you think the word coming forth is nothing. You don't even want to come. You don't even want to call in. You don't even want to participate. You won't even post it and share it. It don't mean nothing to you. You take it for granted. That's when you're eating uh, uh, and drinking damnation. That's, that's, that, that, that's when you become guilty. Right? What, 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 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup, of, of Yeshua unworthily shall be guilty because you ain't honest. You, you got to, you, you slick. You, you ain't cool. You know what I mean? You sit up and, and start of plotting on who you're going to sleep with next. You, 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 you're not sincere. Only the pure in heart shall see Yah. You got to be pure. You got to be tired of sin and you got to be hungry and thirsty. You got to be hungry and thirsting after the truth. So when the word is coming, you grab it. Gotta have it. Th thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You on some old. Get, save me. I want to be saved. You on that type of hype, right? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth uh, uh, Yeshua's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread, the word is coming forth. That's the real bread. And, 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 and drink this cup. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't signed up to be saved. You didn't confess with your mouth. You believed in your heart. You want to be saved, right? You didn't drink. You didn't drink his blood. You do show for. Look at this. Wherefore, whosoever eateth this this bread and drink this cup uh, of Yeshua unworthily, he shall be guilty. He gave him a pass for killing the body. He came to let them kill the body. But you better not mess with the word. You better not do what Adam and Eve did. Disrespected the word. He told them, "Don't you eat of it." They did it anyway. They was pronounced dead and kicked out the garden. So now he can't come into us. Now we can fellowship. Now we're in fellowship. Now we're listening to the word. The quiet is kept. Ain't no crackers around and no grape juice. Ain't no dinners, nor no wine. Y'all ain't getting drunk while I'm teaching this, y'all. And ain't no wine, right? But we're having communion because this is the real communion. The flesh profits nothing. F dinners is fleshly. Cups of wine is fleshly. This is spiritual. We're having real communion right now. And you should not be doing it unworthily. You should not be taking the word lightly. You shouldn't be the type of person to hear the word go forth like this. And then you're going to dive right back into sin like it's nothing. Like it means nothing to you. The word can't even prick your heart. The word don't even make you feel guilty no more. You just do whatever the heck you want to do, however you want to do it, as long as you big enough to do it. Or don't get caught doing it, huh? Because some folks is sneaky. Spouse don't know what you're doing, huh? <clears throat> Look at this. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of Yeshua unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood uh, uh, of the Messiah. But let him examine himself. Don't the word tell you to examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith, being honest? The word is coming forth. You can say, oh, what? I do do that. I need to stop. Oh, I do need to change. Oh, you're right. I don't give. I listen to the word and I'm growing and I'm just stingy as heck. I, I, I'll, I'll get uh, a $15,000 and give give twenty. <laughs> Might not give that. You better be happy you got it. You know how folks, it's just funny style. Don't care nothing about the things of y'all. 
You know what I mean? But let him examine himself, being honest. Who are you really? You ain't got to put on the front. We talk communion, y'all. I'm teaching on communion. Real communion, though. Let him examine himself. Check yourself. Let him examine himself and let him eat of that bread. Be honest. Eat of that bread. Are you scandalous? Are you a liar? Are, are you boastful and proud? Are you stingy? Are you fellowshipping like you should? Are you reading and seeking his face? Are you really hungering and thirsting after righteousness? Can you do a comparison analysis to how much time you spend watching TV and doing what you want to do as opposed to how much time you spend praying and reading your word and getting to know Yah? Are you, are, you, are you trying to change? Are you meditating in the word and admit when you just wrong? You shouldn't talk to your husband like that. You shouldn't treat your wife like that. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be getting drunk and high. You shouldn't be a crackhead no more. You shouldn't be sleeping with that person's spouse. All that type of stuff. Are you examining yourself? Being honest. But let him examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread. Whatever's really going on in your life. Eat that when the word is coming forth. So you can be honest enough for him to change you. So you can confess. So you can open up. So, so when the word comes, it can prick your heart if you're wrong. To the point that you want to be different. You don't want to be like that. Unless you're just happy being the type of person to talk religious. You know how folk talk religious. In the club. Finna go fornicate. On dope. Thanking y'all. Want to holler about the grace of God. You know. But you living like the devil. And you believe that that's going to get you over because you're deceived. Well true communion like we have it now. Is going to bust that lie up. And you will assume responsibility for your life. Because everybody is going to meet him on judgment day. And you're going to give account to every deed done in your body, the word said. But what you want is the blood on your doorpost like in Exodus 12. Like, 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 like Israel had to do. They had to have the blood on them. The Jews, they had to have the blood on them. And then the death angel passed by. And then they had to eat the Passover meal. They had to eat the lamb which represent eating the word. They had to eat the word. And they had to eat bitter word, bitter herbs because it was nasty going in. Because your flesh always fight against truth. Your flesh fight against Yah. Your flesh is enmity against Yah. It's not subject to the law of Yah, neither indeed can be. And enmity means hostile, meaning Yah will tell you to do something and your flesh will say, heck no, I ain't doing that. Or Yah will tell you not to do something and your flesh will say, oh yes, I am doing that. Enmity, bitter herbs. You got to eat it. I, I, I learned to eat bitter herbs. To not do what D-Man want to do. Because it ain't cool. Ain't nothing cool about it. So I can't do me. Huh. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, he said. Take up his torture stake, his tree, and follow him. You can't do you. But there's folks that's got a form of yelling this. They're going to do them. So them is be the ones that going to praise him and cuss you out. Going to praise him and sleep with you. Going to praise him and hit you in your mouth if you say something crazy. Praise you and, and rob you. Sneak off with your family. Break in your car or your house. And praising him the whole time. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Yeshua's body. Not discerning the Messiah's body. Not taking the word seriously. Not giving the most earnest heed to the things which they have heard, at least at any time they should let them slip. Hebrews 2 and 1, y'all. For this cause, many are weak. Weak is, uh, 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 you're weak, even spiritually and physically, and sickly among you. Folks be having cancer and, and, and bad health. One of the curses for Hebrews, for the, for, for the Israelites in, in Levit Leviticus 26 and in, 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 in Deuteronomy 28 was they was going to be sickly. High blood pressure and, you know, cancer and lupus and, and you name it. They claim it. Just told because they're hard-headed. Don't want to listen, right? So many are weak, many are sickly, and many sleep. And this sleep means dead. Folks are dying early because they're evil. And they don't respect nobody, not even the creator. So they dead. For this cause, he said. Because the word is going forth and you don't mean nothing to you. You ain't taking it seriously. You, you, 
it ain't gonna change you. You just like to hear the word every now and then just to hear it, but then you ain't gonna change. You're gonna keep doing you. Some folks got that fake facade religious little thing going on. Well, they don't believe the word, they're religious. You can tell when people don't believe the word. They say make a bunch of religious statements, but it's not founded by the word because they're not serving the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah. Yah is his word. But you got a whole lot of religious people that's just serving the figment of their imagination. They're not serving the word. They're not serving the true Yah. Folks try to serve Yah without the word. You can't because he is the word. Folks will talk religiously without the word backing them. Because they've been serving a wordless creator. They get to make up the word. They get to get a little bit from the book and then wing it from there. And then they got a bunch of people that are blind with them following them. Don't nobody got to prove nothing. Well, I, well, I, I got to prove it. And it got to line up with the word. Don't follow me if I ain't following the word. You crazy if you do. And you crazy if you following somebody that ain't following the word. <laughs> <laughs> they can just talk a good one. Oh, I just love my pastor, so I hear you. Go on, go on right ahead. I'm going to pray for you, though. For this cause, many are weak, sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we're talking about communion, y'all. For if we judge ourselves, being honest, when the word comes forth, you judge yourself. I'm guilty. I, I, I shouldn't be doing this. For if, for, 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 for if, for if we judge ourselves, we try to avoid being weak, sick, and dead. For if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. When the word come forth, we can't give that much credit to a little piece of cracker and some grape juice, can we? Because they say how how holy the term they use. Oh, this is a holy, this is a holy, you can't deny the cracker and a little cup of juice. Yes. That's blasphemy. They so silly. A little cracker? You think that the creator empowered a little piece of cracker, huh? And a little, you don't get, did he talk about the word? Living right, communion, fellowship? You don't, get, no, nobody home? You don't, under, okay. For if we judge ourselves being honest, if you if you wrong, you just wrong. Can you be honest when the word comes? Because if you eat and drink unworthily, if you bypass the word, treat it like it's nothing, trample it under your feet, he cared more about the word than he did his own physical body. That's why he allowed himself to be killed on the tree so that the word can come and live in us. It was all about the word the whole time. So now that the word is here, if we judge ourselves when the word comes, we should not be judged. You don't want to be judged? Then judge yourself. Be honest. And make the necessary changes. Because the 32nd verse say, But when we are judged, Uh-oh. That means he had to do it, right? But when we are judged, we're chasing. He's going to come whoop your tail. Wonder why you sick? Wonder why you weak? Wonder why you losing everything? Because you're a play actor. You're not being honest with how you really live and the things you do. You're putting up a facade. So when, when he judge you, oh, Okay, you want to play a role? For when he judge you, you're going to be whooped because he love you. You're going to be whooped. He's going to whoop you. He's going to break you down. He's going to whoop your tail according to Hebrews, what is it? The 12th chapter? Yeah, Hebrews 12. Read it. What son is it that he don't chasten, it says. He, he whoops every son that he has, unless you be a bastard. If you be without his chest, then all no, you bastards are not sons or daughters. And a bastard is someone that can't receive his father's correction. A bastard is you can't correct them. They ain't going to listen, right? But when we are judged, we're chastened of Yah. Why? That we should not be condemned with the world. Why, is, why would he whoop you? Because he love you. He's a good parent and he don't want you to die like a devil, like a heathen, like a fool. That's not what he has for you. So if you accept him into your life, he has every intention on presenting you blameless before his presence. He's going to send the word to correct you that you change into his image. You want communion? That's true communion. This is communion, not the cracker and the little grape juice that people 
be going around apologizing to everybody before they whip out the little cracker. Every time we come together, with two or three gathered in his name, touch the green according to his word, he's in the midst. And they'll have what they ask for if they don't doubt when they stand forgiven. But he's in the midst when we come together. This is communion. We're having communion on Facebook Live, on the conference line right now. And I hope you're discerning the word that when the word comes forth, you let it change you. The word come to change you into his image. The word come to lead and guide us into all truth. The word come to make us like our father, where we cry in our souls, Abba Father. Y'all spread the word. It might save uh, some ministry, some money on them little crackers and uh, grape juice. You might mess around and get a whole meal with a glass of wine. Who knows? Spirit living, y'all, we love you and thank you for another opportunity to come before you for the breaking of the bread in your word. Uh, we pray it went over with clarity uh, to the hearers and that we may learn and grow thereby. We trust that the word was delivered according to your pleasing. We trust, believe, and thank you. In the matchless name of Yeshua, we humbly pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and all may. Conference recording stopped. Conference unmuted. Okay, that was the that was the lesson. Now we can go type style or we can go call in. If anybody have any questions, any statements on the on the lesson. We love to hear from you. You can call 302-202-1102, extension 815-648, if you want to be heard on Facebook Live. If you're already on the line, uh, the line is now open for you to say something. And if you just want to uh, type something, that's cool, too. But but we're here, we here with you. Talk to us. Uh, you on. You on. You, you on. Anyone have a question or a statement on the lesson? You can just chime right on in if you have something. If not, I'll, we can go. Obviously, some uh, great lesson, communication, communion, fellowship with y'all. Uh, fascinating. Um, something to really meditate on. Uh, union, which means to fellowship or communicate with y'all. It's, it's amazing how y'all is able to communicate with his people able to lead us and direct us uh, through the word. He's able to tell us the do's and the don'ts, which way and which way not to go, which way to go, what to do and what not to do. And he's able to do all those things through the spirit, through the spirit of his word. Like you quoted, like you said, these words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And if we listen, we will have life. Life will be within us, eternal life, uh, which is his spirit. And uh, it's just beautiful how uh, the word was uh, broken down and 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 and, and uh, expounded upon, and uh, it's really a blessing. Uh, what stuck with me is the fact that we must discern His body. You know, we have to really discern the word. The word is leading us. The Bible said that His Spirit will lead us and guide us in all truths and all righteousness. And if we're able to discern, in other words, if we're able to, to listen, if we're able to hear, if we're able to obey, submit, be led by his word, then he's able to communicate effectively with us. And that's what the word does. It'll lead you and guide you. It, the, the shepherd leads the sheep through the dangerous passage dangerous situations, dangerous territory. Now I'm talking about spiritual uh, situations, things that are dangerous, things that are uh, where predators may be, where, 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 where the enemy is. Sometimes Yah will lead you right through the enemy's camp. The Bible said that the Spirit came under Yahshua to lead him into temptation. It led him into the wilderness, rather, to be tempted of the devil. And that's what the Spirit will do. It will lead you into whatever Yah is. Because the foots of a righteous, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by Yah. So it's a beautiful thing when we're able to discern the Word, His body, when we're able to really hear what He's telling us, when we're really able to grasp hold. But you have to have a spiritual ear in order to discern His body. It was just a wonderful message. He was able to, the 
the word has free course. The word is able to reach. The Bible says that the word don't go out and void, but it goes out and it accomplishes that which is meant to accomplish. The word does what it's supposed to do. It leads, it guides, it directs, it corrects, it instructs. It does it all. It, it does it all. It loves. It disciplines. It does it all. The word is just phenomenal. Everything we need is in the word. We gotta eat the word, y'all. Wonderful message, communion, to fellowship. Just like he did in Adam and, and Eve in the garden. He came and he spoke with them. He talked with them. And just like he had a desire to do with us, he wants to speak to us each and every day. If you listen. But who wants to c- communicate with somebody who's not listening? Not even Yah. But Yah wants to lead us and guide us when we have a heart to repent and we have a heart to do the will of Yah. Once again, wonderful message. Got a lot of it. Bless you, man. Yah, wonderfully expounded upon Baruch Shalom. Baraka Shalom. Always a pleasure hearing from you, Elder. <clears throat> Anybody else? Awesome word, awesome word. I love, I love the way you broke it down, Pastor. Just how important it is to understand the word and to communicate with each other and to get full off the word, eating the word, as the breaking of the bread of his body, as the drinking of the wine of the word. It's just awesome how you broke it down and made it more understandable for me. I'm going to go back and read it over again and study more just to make sure that I really understand what it's saying and how he's saying it. And it just makes so much sense. I'm very grateful for that word tonight. My prayers for everyone on the line that you're absorbing and understanding how the word can be translated in different ways and then how the church tries to teach us all of these different traditions and different, how do they say it, pagan things and the understanding of the word is not that difficult. So I thank you, Pastor, and I'm very grateful for being a part of this ministry. Um, everyone on the line, um, I'm praying for you, and my hope is that you're understanding and you're not just listening, but you're absorbing and studying the word for yourself because it's awesome how it's broken down and how Yah he will do us in life if we stay in our word and how he will take care of us. I'm grateful for the word, like I'm going to say again, Pastor. Thank you. Keep teaching. And I'm here. I'm listening. And I'm studying. Barak Shalom. Everyone have a blessed month. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm rocking with the month. I'm, I'm rolling with you on that one. Always great to hear from you, Rashida. Barak and Shalom. Anyone else? Yes, hallelujah. Go ahead, sister. I just want to say that um, the word was beautiful once again. And I was just thinking about John 6 that you went to. And you know when it said uh, John 6 and 47... He said, very, very, I said unto you, he that believeth in him and me have everlasting life. But when I looked at that, that, that TH at the end, that means that we got to continue. Yeah. And that's what I always really, like, focus on, that I can't stop. I started this, and, and you know, he's all the author finish of my faith. And if I keep on eating the word, I put eating the word down there, <laughs> and that I know I can have eternal life, and I could be with him. And I also wanted to go to uh, John 6 and, let me see, 64 when, let me see, was it 64? I mean, 47, when, um, 46 and 47. No, I'm sorry. The one that said that, um, believe not. The scripture that said, believe not, I put down, you know, that a lot of people stop, you know, and that's the, that's the uh, difference between be, be, uh, continue, believing with the TH, and believing not, that people stop. I believe you're talking about 64, stop. mother. I believe, I believe okay. you're talking about 64. Look at it. Believe it, it don't have 
T H on there, so they stopped. And yes. I was focused on that. And, and I just think about that. We just have to remain, remain in Him, and we got to do the T H. Believe it. You know, continue. And we just can't stop. You know, it's, it's like we got to take this by force. We can't play. You know, we're not babes anymore. You know, we got to continue. You know, and we got to help one another through all this. That you know, because it's gonna be some heartaches and pain someday. But because of Him. He give us a piece to pass our understanding, and we just got to remember that, you know. So I just said, pray for me as I pray for everyone, and um, um, praise be to Yah. Hallelujah. Beautiful word coming from Mother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you, Mother Katie. Thank you. Brock and Shalom. Read a B. I just pray that God allows us to keep our spiritual eyes and ears and uh, continue to hear loud and clear. Um, Always great hearing from you and encouraging words you've been bringing, Ezra. Definitely, yeah. definitely, soldier. Barack's law. We to be. <laughs> I'm just waiting because Ezra be going in, which is a blessing. So I'm just waiting to hear what that says the most high. Thank you again for pouring out your heart, mighty man of Yah, for giving us truth and un uncut and unveiled that you know, <laughs> we will be without excuse. And I'm like Mother Katie just said, it's amazing because I was thinking on the same lines that we do not stop growing in his favor and knowledge of our master, savior, and king. We're growing every day. So so now hearing, um, and I've, I've heard it, but then I got something else out of it. Hearing about the uh, koinonia, that's what it is, fellowship, communion, that um, I used to laugh at when I read if you're hungry, eat at home. I think that's what the contemporary contemporary person say. If you're hungry, eat at home. So, but you broke it down so beautifully that it's not about the natural, not about this fleshly thing. It's about the spirit of life, ruach hakadosh, in us, uh, 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 transforming us, causing us to become one in, in the Messiah. And um, he keeps bringing that up to me. Um, Yahshua, pray, Father, make them one as you and I are one. And that is a wonderful, I think it's going to be a phenomenal miracle. And when that manifests to me, I, I, I don't have, it's just what I'm feeling. And, and I believe when we, the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, from all walks of life, coming out of all religions, denominations, all kinds of different sects, sects, yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah, that's what I'm saying, and yep. become one in the Messiah, hallelujah, I believe that that's when he's going to allow us to be caught up, and plus before the uh, tribulation period, the, the, the Jacob's trouble and, and the, the time of, of trial. So I'm just excited about hearing this word. That was a, a blessing. Baruch. But, uh, Baruch, yes. And I look forward to hearing the rest of the commentary. Love you all. Barak Shalom. All right. Always great hearing from you, how you break down the word. Even the more. A blessing to the ministry. Barak Shalom. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word was on time. It was so powerful. It was amazing. I'm back to all the commentaries that were spoken. And I'm thankful, Pastor, my watchman, my aunt, for the excellent word. It made me say ouch. And I'm, I'm thankful that I um, to praise, the, praise the Father, praise the Lord, and ask Him for guidance and understanding because I'm in the church world um, after I take the 
couldn't have won. I think that, you know, everything was good. And then here I go doing things that um, that wasn't pleasable to the site. And I know, and as you're teaching me with relationships and studying uh, to show yourself improved and, and being honest and being um, grateful um, of what the Father gives you for being honest because you and the Father only know which which you um, suffer, what you're doing, and which addictions or anything. And when you're praying and just asking the Father uh, with all your heart, I mean, it, it takes, I mean, the back of your stomach and the little haka dish will fill you up. And, 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 and we got to go through Yahshua to get to Yah. So we got to know. We got to, and that's what I'm so thankful and I'm praying for more. Um, more um, other father because I love him so much and I know how that will how could this work. It was it would get you and it was it was it was of course it'll save you and, and but you gotta mean it from your from your from your soul. You gotta the only you and the father know so that's why I'm always transparent because I I'm just, I'm just so grateful and um sometimes back back well not sometimes back then I wasn't able to say nothing but I knew that um that um that uh, I needed to um, repent, repent, and give it all to the Father and ask for uh, forgiveness and leading and guiding. And I'm still asking for this day, but I'm just thankful for like a bunch of fresh air, fresh, 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 fresh air when I hear you um, preaching. And if I'm late, I get online and see it, or, and it, it gives me this, this, this great power and understanding and know that I have a uh, purpose. Um, I have a purpose, and the Father is, I'm just grateful for him, grateful for you, grateful for the ministry, the power, the strength, the, the trouble. I'm so grateful, and I'm uh, thankful for you. And everyone on the line, bless you all. Total, um, Baraka, and Shalom. Baraka, Shalom. Always great hearing from you, niece. Love you. Great hearing your voice. I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, and uh, keep 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 on keeping on. Bless you. Uh, anyone else before we go? Look like we got another one in, gang. I ain't going to keep you all. I'm a little tired, too. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Facebook Live, for hanging out with us. Again, go back through the scriptures, you know, study, show yourself, approve on the Yah. Workmen need not be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. Y'all enjoy the rest of your evening. Let's pray for one another. Again, Barak Shalom. I'm out.